Hello everyone and welcome to John's Workshop. And by the way, Happy New Year. It is now January of 2014, believe it or not. In my last video, I showed you my three-tube regenerative shortwave radio receiver. A little radio I've been very happy with except for one problem. It cannot drive a loudspeaker directly. To listen to it, I have to wear high impedance headphones. And let me tell you, wearing high impedance headphones hour after hour can get very uncomfortable and at times very inconvenient, especially when my wife is trying to call me to dinner. And of course, two steel discs do not make for very good fidelity. So I decided to build a standalone amplifier I can use with my radio receiver and other projects I intend to build. And here it is. This little amplifier is AC or transformer powered. It has three tubes and it is rated at four watts. Let me show you some details. And here are the guts. A 6SJ7 pin toad is my first audio, followed by a 6V6GT output tube, which is followed by my OT10SE output transformer, which I bought from Musical Power Supplies Incorporated. It is a very versatile single-ended transformer. It has two input impedances, 5K and 7K, and three output impedances, 4 ohms, 8 ohms, and 16 ohms. My tone control is a combination high-pass, low-pass filter, each one connected to opposite ends of a potentiometer. And of course, the center tap is grounded. My rectifier is a 6V6GT, followed by a single 16 microfarad capacitor and a heavy overrated filter choke. On my back panel, I have four binding posts to accommodate speaker connections. Of course, this project is fuse protected. It draws about 500 milliamps, so my fuse is rated at one amp. And naturally, my power cord is three conductor. As you can see, both my shortwave radio and my amplifier were built using breadboard technique. I like working on breadboards. Aluminum chassis are expensive. You have to have chassis punches for the tube sockets and you often have to do a lot of mechanical nibbling to make parts fit. For anybody planning to build something on a breadboard, I have a couple of handy hints I'd like to pass along. And here is the underneath side of my breadboard. You will notice some wiring. Who says that all the wiring has to be on top of the breadboard? What you see here is all the AC wiring. Wiring to the filaments, and the line to my power switch on the front panel. This keeps all AC lines away from signal bearing lines, reducing the chance of hum. It also makes for less clutter on top of the breadboard, a very good idea. And finally, four nice hefty rubber feet from Home Depot. If you're wondering how a tube socket gets mounted to a breadboard, here's what I do. First of all, I only use the wafer tube sockets because they're easier to mount. Then I bend back all the terminals like this to make them more accessible for soldering. Then I take a long skinny wood screw and combine it with a one half inch spacer. And then I can mount my tube socket. So the tube socket is held one half inch above the breadboard. This is what it looks like when you're done. And remember, if you're working from the top of a tube socket, to number the pins counterclockwise, not clockwise, but counterclockwise, starting from the reference mark, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This can be confusing if you're used to working from the bottom of a chassis. My video wouldn't be complete 
unless I gave some credit to the publication where I found the plans for my amplifier. Practical amplifier diagrams, and there are 45 of them. Proven circuits for the technician and the experimenter. Original price, $2. This book was written by Jack Robin and Chester E. Lippman. Copyright 1947 by Austronic Publications of Los Angeles. Who in the world has ever heard of Austronic Publications of Los Angeles? This book covers everything from a 1 tube 1 watt amplifier all the way up to an 11 tube 75 watt PA amplifier. Now it's very unlikely that you're going to run into an original hard copy of this publication like I have here. In fact, I found this in Ventura, California, in a collectible store called True Blood, which unfortunately is no longer there. However, the publication is available on CD from the following people. To wrap it up, I'd like to give you a little demonstration of my amplifier. I have it hooked up to a hi-fi signal source and also to a small bass reflex speaker from Radio Shack. I'm not sure how good the audio is going to come across on my video, but let's see what we get. Sounds just like Vivaldi's Four Seasons to me. Room filling volume, nice clean sound, what more do you want? Well, that's it for now, folks. Again, Happy New Year, and thank you for listening. <laughs>